have seen the title of the video, so you know why we're here, but let's chat about why I am selling my 1971 Volkswagen Super Beetle convertible. It's very likely that if you have just stumbled upon my YouTube channel, not gotten here from Instagram or Pinterest, but just kind of stumbled upon it from maybe a Google search, you are here because of my Volkswagen. My number one video, I think it's my number one video that has the most views, is the convertible installation that we did on the Volkswagen. I have views from all over the world. I've had you comment. I love having you comment on the videos. It's taken me a long time to be mentally in the place where I'm ready to sell the Volkswagen. I have a project that I wanna do to bid it farewell and we will chat about that and that's what this video will be about is this project that we're gonna do to say goodbye to the Volkswagen. So why has it been so difficult for me to be ready to sell it? It's basically a lifelong story. Um, I have always, always wanted an old convertible Volkswagen. As long as I can remember from when I was a very little kid, I am a child of the 90s and um, when we would play MASH and you got to pick like three cars that you really wanted and then your friend would throw in like a fourth kind of junker car, the junker car was not the Volkswagen. <laughs> Maybe for some people, not for me. The three cars that I picked all started with a V. This will tell you like how 90s of a kid I was. It was VET, so for Corvette, a Viper. I loved like those streamlined sports cars and Vipers were huge in the 90s. So VET, Viper, Volkswagen. And it had to be a 60s or 70s convertible Volkswagen. So when it came time for me to start driving, we looked and looked for a Volkswagen. And the only one that we came across that was not just a traditional hardtop, um, we came across a sunroof. And we went and looked at it. And at the end of the day, I just felt like I was settling. I had to have the convertible. So instead, we bought a 1977 MGB. We didn't have that one very long, we wound up not restoring it because I found a 1977 Triumph Spitfire that I wanted instead. Sold the MGB, bought the Spitfire, restored the Spitfire. I still have it to this day. You can go watch a couple of videos about my Spitfire um, on my channel. I have no plans to ever get rid of it. Love that car. Drove it throughout high school and I drove it my first year of college. Um, and I would drive home two and a half hours um, from where I was in college to where my parents were living. And it did break down the interstate a couple times. <laughs> um, so I knew at the end of my freshman year of college that I needed a car that was a bit more reliable for driving that distance and going other places. So I got, and um, this was the spring of 2004, I bought a 2003 Red Beetle. Not a convertible, but a Beetle nonetheless. My first. Volkswagen. I love that car. I had it a few years and then when I graduated from college I wound up trading it in to get something a little bit bigger and I got a Jeep Compass. So I did have a Volkswagen and I loved it but it was not old. It was not a convertible. The two things that were my dream. So let's fast forward to around it was 2014 no, 2015, my um, now oldest daughter but my only daughter at the time was about a year old and we went to visit a family friend in Cullen, Spring Hill, Louisiana, which is where I lived until I was 13. We went to her house. We had not been to this house before because she had been um, remarried since and we didn't get to know her new husband um, because um, he passed away um, before we got to know him. So we pull up to the house and they have a barn and under the barn is a convertible Volkswagen. The convertible top was not on it, but there was a shell of a Volkswagen and we bought it. Then we spent the next several months, we got it to Texarkana where my parents live. My dad has a shop and he spent a lot of time. He did most of the restorations. My brother helped and then my husband and I would drive down from where we live in central Arkansas. We would drive down and work on it. And that's where we did just one day we were getting ready to start the convertible installation. And I said, let me video this. This might be helpful to someone else because we have so many questions. We have so many things we're coming across. Maybe this will help somebody else. And that's how that video came about. And I get the car around springtime. Um, my dad trailers it and brings it to where I live in Conway 
and that becomes my daily driver. We had one other car, a 2006 Jeep Commander that we still have, and then the Volkswagen was my daily driver. I drove my daughter around in it everywhere. She loved it. She fell asleep every single time. Even if we were just running to the gas station, running to the store, wherever, she fell asleep because of the loud noise coming <laughs> from the engine and um, that was right there basically at the back seat since the engine's a few hours later <laughs> and I'm back. Where did I leave off? Fast forward. I used this as my daily driver for a couple of years. I realized I probably need something a bit more reliable. Sometimes the bug would have issues that would come up like any vintage car is going to have. And I didn't always have the time to work on it. I definitely didn't have the knowledge to work on it. Um, so I'd have to wait for my dad to come through town and work on it. I couldn't leave town really in it. I uh, bought a 2007 Volvo XC90. Quite a bit older car. Not old like the Volkswagen but definitely not a new car. And we got it, paid cash for it because it was a very inexpensive car. And I drove, started driving that every day and really liked it. And then I got pregnant with our second daughter and the Volvo started having issues and we would have to have it in the shop and get things and it eventually was getting to where we were going to be putting more into the car than we would ever get out of it really more than it was worth and it wasn't like a hobby car like a Volkswagen it was just a used car that we were going to keep putting stuff into um, and it was going to need more and more work get a newer car meanwhile the Volkswagen I didn't really drive it when I was pregnant I had kind of had to stop driving it because there is no air conditioning in it, of course. That's why you put the top down. <laughs> but I have uh, chronic pain and it's aggravated by heat. I have the swelling issue and I swell really bad when it gets hot. So put yourself in a car in the south in the summer, no air conditioning, and it could get pretty hot. Um, and so I had looked at putting air conditioning in because you can get kits. They cost quite a bit. And so I was trying to decide if I was going to save up to buy it. But then a lot of the reviews I read said, don't think of this or compare it to modern air conditioning. Um, and I thought, well, what if I buy it, put it in, and I can't really tell a difference. It got to be painful to drive it. Um because I would just get so hot and I would swell and it just, I would have a lot of pain. So I've known for a while that I probably needed to sell it, but I was having a hard time getting to that place mentally and even emotionally. And I know that may sound silly. There was just something about the fact that this was something I'd wanted my entire life. Something that I had worked on with my dad, something my husband and my brother had worked on. And I just knew, first of all, if I sell it, I'm probably never gonna have this car, not this particular car, but I'm probably never gonna have a convertible Volkswagen again because they can be hard to find and either I would have to buy it like I bought it initially, like in order to afford it, I would have to buy something that needed a lot of work, but then we were never gonna have, that was a time in our life that it came together that that would work. That's not really the case anymore, especially with me having two kids now. I don't have the time. It took a lot of time for my dad to work on. Um, and it just, I don't think that it's going to be a thing. And I may be wrong, but I don't have the knowledge to do it myself one day if I have time. It just, it took a group of people to work on this car. Let's say that I find a car that's already done showroom quality. I won't be able to afford that. <laughs> I won't be able to afford that and have an everyday driver car. So there's just a part of me that knows when I say goodbye to this car, that's it. I know that may sound silly or it may seem like, well, what does it matter? But I've had a lot of fun in the car and I've enjoyed it, but it does now feel more like a burden because I do need to keep it clean. I do need to take care of it. It is, you know, sitting at our house, <laughs> taking up space. I also, don't want it wasting away in our driveway. I want someone to get it and take care of it. And that's just not something I can do at this point. It's better for us as a family to not have this to take care of. And it's better for the car. I know the car is not, 
a person but it's better for the car to have somebody that's um going to do what needs to be done for it to mark the end of this dream that was realized and to celebrate the fact that i got to have this thing that tiny marla always wanted i'm going to sew something i don't know it may seem like well those two things don't really go together but i've had this thought for over a year because i've known for over a year i needed to sell it i've had this thought of I want to make something to just kind of close out this chapter and I will still have that thing even though I won't have the beetle I will have that thing that I made to kind of remember that I can take pictures with the beetle in this thing that I made um, and it kind of be the send-off for whatever person comes along that eventually buys it um, this is the last thing that I can kind of do to close out this chapter because it's not just closing out time with a car it's kind of closing out this dream and this time that I had so initially I had looked up fashion from 1971 and there's a lot of groovy fashion I looked at pants that were really cool that had the flare leg not quite bell bottom but had a flare to them there was a lot of plaid coming up in 1971 um, I thought what's something that I will keep wearing and it won't just it won't look like I made something to come out of 1971 but it looks like something that would be more timeless that I could wear it now and I was really struggling and then I found I got all kinds of sewing piles over here I found this this is a bath towel I found this at Ross I got three of them this is the right side the side that's like meant to be seen but the inside is just as fun so I've been wanting to make a jacket cardigan thing out of this because I thought very cozy. Then I started thinking, <laughs> and I never like called my beetle by a name, but in my head, I always just kind of started calling it sunflower because the sunflower has kind of like a groovy look to it and it's yellow. My Triumph, I'd always kind of called sunshine. It's yellow. It just happens that both of these cars were the, those are for the original yellow colors so it wasn't that I went out and painted both of them yellow the Spitfire we repainted but we repainted it the original color I'm saying goodbye to sunflower I happened to have picked up these sunflower towels not connecting those or putting those two things together so what we're gonna make is this this is a free pattern from Seamwork and is it the Kintz or Kintze pattern and it's a robe and you can make it all different ways there's different lengths um, you can make it very loose fitting which is if you go by your measurements it will be very loose or you could size down to have less ease in the pattern and that's my plan is to size down so it's not like very oversized so I started looking to see was this something anybody would have been wearing around 1971 and I did find some like oversized robes like open sweaters, kind of a cardigan look. And I think that even though this may not be like an exact thing from 1971, we'll be able to get by with it and it will pay honor to the beetle. I don't know when I'll sell the beetle, but I wanna get this done so I can get pictures with it before it's gone. According to my measurements, I would be around I don't have it in front of me right now but I would be around the size 12 according to my bust but then if you look at the ease it's going to be massive I'm gonna make it according to a size 4 I could make it according to a size 0 if I wanted it to be fitted like a cardigan and I would even I think the fabric would meet up in the front but I wouldn't be able to overlap it so I almost then went up to the size 2 and then I got a little bit scared that I would cut my fabric and it would be too small. So I'm gonna make this size four because I think I'm gonna do French seams so that we can make this reversible. One thing I'm gonna try to see is for the two front pieces, if I can cut them so that the front opening, um, each side will line up here so that I don't have to hem this, it would already be finished nicely. I also just noticed that down here, it's like a row of smaller flowers. How cute, I hadn't noticed that yet. So I'm gonna try to make this the bottom hem 
um, or the bottom of the jacket so I won't have to hem and then that's like the line at the bottom. When you're sewing something, you don't have to always go exactly how the pattern tells you. They want you to tweak it. This pattern even has different ways to tweak it on their website. Um, and this is an example of something that you can do so that you can make it work for the amount of fabric you have and even the amount of work you may want to do because I'm going to save some work not having to join this at the back seam and doing the French seam or a flat fell seam. This is going to save me a little bit of time as well. Oh, and yes, I did change for the third time today. It's very cold here today, and that long sleeve shirt alone wasn't going to keep me warm in the house, so I got on my comfy work sweatshirt. This is what I do, like, all the work in because I don't care if it gets messed up and it's cozy, and pajama pants are back on. I've cut my fabric pieces. While I was making the last two cuts of the mid sleeve and the cuff, I miscut part of the mid sleeve which means I needed to cut it again and I was afraid that meant I was gonna mess up the whole thing and not have enough fabric it worked out and I even have this much fabric left this is the piece I miscut <sighs> because I cut it and then I realized I only had enough of for the small flowers I only had enough for one mid sleeve and the other mid sleeve would not have had the cute little flowers and it would have been off in the pattern and originally when I was cutting, I thought, oh, I can have cute flowers on each mid sleeve. Didn't work out. So I'll have this for some other project. Now, uh, I'm gonna get the little one down for a nap. Both of my kids are home today. My two year old's always home, but my eight year old is home sick. And then uh, hopefully I can start sewing this together. I've had a few offers on the beetle. I haven't decided if I'm going to accept any of the offers yet, but that has pushed me to get this thing done sooner. Um, in case I do accept it, I need to have this done so I can get some pictures with the beetle to say goodbye first. I was just sitting here thinking, this is going to be a pretty quick sew and pretty straightforward. Just keep thinking, okay, I'm going to have this done today. And then here I am sewing on the mid sleeve and I meant to put the other side like this so you would have the jacket as this. The mid sleeve would be the alternate color and then the cuff would be the main color again and I messed up and it's just going to be all the same. Which is okay but that's what happens when I work on something and step away to do something like put the baby down or do something else. I come back and I've lost that thought and then I just move on. I also meant to put that seam going that way and I put it the wrong way. Anyway, I've already sewn it on. I'm not unpicking it, especially this because it's fraying and unpicking it I think would be not fun. Carry on. Now that I've French seamed quite a bit to the point that there's like no turning back, <laughs> I think that serging would have been the easier way to go and it would have looked nice inside. I probably wouldn't have worn it reverse, but I'm kind of getting to where I think maybe even with the French seams, I won't be turning this inside out because I thought I could do the French seams and then where's one to show you. Here's the completed French seam on the outside, looks nice. I thought I could then on the inside stitch flat the French seam. Here's the bulk of the French seam on the inside. Thought I could stitch it flat so when I have it on, this isn't sticking up. It would be sewn flat. This fabric is thick and then add how many layers, especially when a French seam seam meets up with another French seam seam and where they meet, it's like way too thick and I'm having to take it really slow with my machine. A serger would have been faster and easier, but here we are. I put it on and the French seams have definitely added too much bulk to the underarm. Pattern, it says to clip a V in the underarm if you're doing just regular stitches. I can't really do that and so you can see how it's kind of pulling. There's a lot of bulk right here because I had to French seam here 
my French seamed up here. So these two are meeting up and it's causing a lot of bulk. The inside looks really nice and finished, um, but the underarms are now bulky. I still have room to overlap. So if I had made a 12 or 14, like my best measurement was saying, this would have been massive on me because I think there's still a lot of room in this. It's a good thing that I went with the four since I did the French seams. If I was going to do regular, I would either stick with the four and have a little bit more oversized or I would maybe go down to the size two. So that's something to think about. I My suggestion is not to go off your measurements, but to look at their ease and to decide just how much um, oversized you want it and go off the ease measurements instead. I've got the collar on and it was quite a task for my sewing machine because we're sewing through lots of layers. The other thing that I've been doing is the underarm where it's bulky. I laid it and pushed it flat and I've got it pinned and just kind of resting in place. And I'm gonna get an iron and press it and see if that helps with the bulkiness. I'm not sure what to do because I've got a French seam here where it curves and a French seam here and then a French seam here and they are, this is all meeting up. You can see how thick this area is. So I definitely shouldn't have French seamed terry cloth bath towel. <laughs> all I have left to do is to put the cuff, which I'm doing a little bit differently than the instructions. I'm going to attach the cuff with my serger because I just can't French seam anymore. Something does not sound good. Oh, it's stuck. From the best I can tell, it looks like my left needle got bent like this. So it got caught and probably pulled and bent and I am not going to take the time right now because it's dinner time. I'm not going to take the time to change out the needle and re-thread it. Um, but that's really frustrating because that actually was a new needle. But I just, I put something in there that I shouldn't have. These French seams have caused issues. I also think it would have been easier if the cuff would have been attached to the mid sleeve before it did the sewing up at the side and under the arm, because now I'm attaching an inset sleeve. But the way I'm doing it, because I'm not doing it like the instructions, that would have been easier. Great, okay, well, not finishing this now. For now, I will come back and finish this later and figure out the situation. Well, um, <clears throat> this morning, I woke up to a message, um, someone giving me an offer on the beetle. And while it's not quite what I really would have wanted as far as like if I had put a minimum of what I wanted, it's a little less than that. But I don't need it sitting around and the bug really needs to be driven every day um, and at least on a regular basis or things keep going wrong on it and I'll have to keep replacing those parts so that'll cost me money. I went ahead, I had lipstick on but I've rubbed it off so this is just kind of stained lips. Put on lipstick, put on a little bit more blush because um, it's been several hours since I initially put my makeup on. I put on my sunflower cardigan. I went outside, stood in front of the bug and had Colin snap a few pictures of me in front of the bug wearing the cardigan I made to say goodbye to it.
I've been sitting here editing this video and I knew that I had not ever done like a proper sit down conclusion because the day that the car drove away, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't sit down and talk about it. Um, I was sad. <laughs> so I just came in the house and busied myself with other projects. Um, so now some time has passed, I can talk about it. It is bittersweet to watch all of this and to know that the car is gone. The person that bought it is going to be doing some body work to it, painting it, and then they're going to be reselling it. So hopefully someone will get it and will love it and enjoy it. Well, I did not get what I would have wanted for the car, what I think it was worth. It's still a blessing to be able to use those funds. We had to buy four new tires for my car. We have some repairs that need to be done to our 2006 Jeep, and we have some other things that we need to use that money for. So it's a blessing that now that those needs are provided. Thank you to all of you who have been around for so long and have been part of this Beetle journey. You've watched the restoration video, you watched the updates as we were restoring it on my blog, um, and you've just been part of this whole Beetle journey. So even though the bug is gone, I hope that you decide to stick around for the other things that we're doing on this channel. And you can also head over to our family channel, Scheduling Adventure, and we schedule times to go out and adventure as a family, a lot around Arkansas and around the surrounding areas. So you can kind of catch our adventures there. And thank you so much for being here.